47 years ago. I was only four years old. My fa family suffered a tragedy. A tragedy that no family should have to go through. My father had a dream of a life full of opportunity. So we immigrated from Mexico to the United States. Soon after, my parents found out that they were expecting a set of twins. Life was good. We had a home. My father had a job. We had each other. But little did we know that our life was about to turn upside down forever. The day came when my mother was to deliver. At that time, if you remember, the, parent, the husband had to stay in the waiting area and pace back and forth while the mother was delivering. My father was pacing back and forth, and he had no idea that something very bad was happening in the delivery room. My mother delivered the first baby. The doctor handed it to the young nurse that was right there. The young nurse was very excited about this new baby. Maybe she was uh, new to the medical field. And she got the baby and showed my mom and said, uh, congratulations on your baby boy. The doctor all of a sudden just nudged her and gave her a stern look like, give it to the older nurse that's there. That startled the nurse. So she just handed the baby to the older nurse and came back for the second one. The second baby was born and uh, he handed it to the young nurse, but she wasn't gonna make the same mistake. She just got, got it and gave it to the older nurse. And then they proceeded to finish with my mother and clean up the babies and slowly but surely, everybody started leaving the room except for that older nurse. She came and handed the baby to my mother, the baby girl. And then she started to walk away. But my mom did not speak English, so she started to gesture. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Where's my other baby? And the nurse said, no, just one. She goes, no, 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 this is a girl. Where's my boy? They started gesturing back and forth. And the nurse was saying, no, there's just one. When, my, when it dawned on my mother what she was saying, she started to scream. She started like, no, I have two babies. Where is my other baby? So the nurse quickly went to her, grabbed, uh, tried to grab her, the baby girl and pulled her away. My mom held her and said, just grabbed her and no, no, no. And she said, okay, then just be quiet. Almost like saying, you want me to take that one too? So when my mother did, tried to keep herself from screaming and crying, <clears throat> the nurse handed her a baby girl. That was my sister. She did not hand him a baby boy. That was my brother that I have never met. When my father found out about what had happened, he started to cry. He was in disbelief that this was actually happening here in the United States. He was crying. He was yelling. He didn't know what to do out of desperation. He goes outside the door and is stopping everybody who's passing by. Is, you know, help me. Please stop. Stop. Help me. Somebody help me. The people would stop. They wanted to help. Everybody heard them, but nobody could help. No one spoke their language. My brother was kidnapped at birth. Okay. My parents believed it was the doctor with the help of the nurse. My parents were poor. They didn't speak the language. Although they tried, they knew that there is no way they were going to be win against a doctor and a hospital. So eventually, they had to give up and, and accept the fact that they no longer had a baby boy. My brother was never returned to us. We, we never got over the loss. We always lived in a home full of sorrow where grief was always felt. You see, most of us have had a loved one pass away. And we know that with time, that pain slowly starts to lessen until all that's left is um, the happy memories that we spent with them. It's not like that with an infant kidnapping. 
the heart never heals. There are no happy memories to comfort you. There is no closure. There's only those haunting questions. Where is he? Are they hurting him? Is he crying? Is he waiting for us to come rescue him? What's happening? I don't know how old I was when I first understood the story about what happened to my brother, but I remember the impact that it made. I remember thinking as a little girl, I want to learn English. I want to work at a hospital where I can help other people that don't speak English. Little did I know that that would mean becoming a medical interpreter someday. Now, years later, my dream of becoming a medical interpreter has come true. At a hospital. My father's dream also came true of giving me a life full of opportunity. I have had the opportunity of a college degree, of being a published author, of interpreting in different languages. As a matter of fact, I was able to interpret for John Walsh from America's Most Wanted. And I've been given the opportunity to stand here and um, speak to you in behalf of TEDx. My life is full of opportunities. Um, it's never been for me, it's never been about a career or a job. It's always been about channeling that passion that I have inside burning to use it for helping others. Okay, I'm in my dream job. Doing what I love. And it happens. Another life changing event. One night I was working at the hospital and I get paged 911. That means drop what you're doing and run. So I ran upstairs, turned the corner, and I found myself in the middle of 20 doctors, nurses, hospital staff, policemen. The policemen over there had one man. There was a mother here crying uncontrollably holding a baby girl. And I didn't know what was going on, so I turned around and looked at the nurse, and she said it was an attempted kidnap. So I, I turned around and looked at the, nurse, uh, the mother, held her arm, rubbed her back, and said, you see all these people here? None of them are going to let anything happen to your baby. So please, calm down and tell us what happened. So she proceeded to tell us her scary story about how this man tried to take her baby girl. After a while, the police took the man away. The, uh, a nurse that had taken the baby to her room to just calm the baby while she's telling the story came back and handed her back the baby and she just held her in her arms and started crying tears of relief. As I was walking back to the office after this, I was thinking about what had just happened. This was like the unusual interpretation. And then all of a sudden I start to feel sick. I start to shake, my legs start to weaken. I don't know what's happening to me, and I'm thinking, oh my goodness, well, I'm going to pass out. So I'm looking for a place to sit, and there wasn't any. So I was thinking, what, what's going on? It looks like maybe my body figured out what the greatness of what had just happened before my mind did. So I had to stand up straight, hold my hands from shaking, and then try to figure out what's going on. And then it dawned on me. That night, I did for that lady, that mother, what nobody did for my parents 47 years ago. I became her voice. I was able to share the anguish as she told her frightening story of the man attempting to take her baby. I told it in a language that every single one there understood. And because of that, she got the help and the protection that she needed. Her, her story, her tragic story, had a good ending. 
she was upstairs holding her baby secure in her arms. You see, my life event, the one that started when my brother was kidnapped, ended that night with the um, mother holding her baby safe in her arms. And I know you're probably thinking, well, I might, it could have been any of the interpreters from the hospital that got that call that night, and they would have done a good job. Except it was I that needed that closure that that night brought me. You know, it's funny, because that night I went upstairs ready to help a patient, but it was I who was helped. It was I who walked out a changed person. Friends, your past, your tragedy, that's not a mistake. Don't let it hold you back. It's a tool, a tool that's been given to you to help others and to help you become the person that you have meant to be. Thank you.